Hey there, folks. Jeremy from the Seeds of Liberty podcast here with another installment of Abolitionist Abstractions. Today I want to discuss Flag Day, which recently came to pass here in the great old USSA. Uh, I personally like to refer to it more as Enslavement Shroud Appreciation Day. Um, I had actually wanted to shoot this video on Enslavement Shroud Appreciation Day, but as life has a habit of doing, it got in the way of my activism. But better late than never, as I like to say. So, leading up to, during, and even a little after the holiday known as Flag Day, many a statist pull out their flags, wave them proudly, and get very angry when anybody has anything negative to say about the shroud that they like to wave above their heads or at their sides or wherever it is. Um, now, it's very easy to rustle the jimmies of a statist uh, by saying something negative about the flag, uh, threatening to burn a flag, or desecrate a flag in some manner. Um, but this discussion really is not about the flag itself, but more about property rights. Because when it comes down to it, if you are somebody who chooses to burn a flag or desecrate a flag or do whatever you want to a flag that you have purchased with your own money, it is your property. You can do with it as you see fit as long as you are not harming anyone else in the process. As long as you are not committing aggression against another, it's your property. Do with it what you want. But far too many flag worshippers do not recognize this. Now, most of them, being statists, don't actually understand property rights at all to begin with, but it becomes ramped up when talking about my flag, because you'll often see that. There's plenty of memes thrown around, um, you know, usually from members of the military or supporters of the members of the military talking about, if I see you burn my flag, I'll come there and kick your ass. Well, it's not your flag. If I'm holding it and I've bought it, and I choose to burn it, I'm burning my flag, not your flag. Now, they have tied this idea, this collective notion that it represents the country, so it represents the people, which, as we've discussed in previous installments of this show and on the Seeds of Liberty podcast, uh, is just a ridiculous notion because it's, it's a collectivizing thing. There, there is no country. It's, it's, it's all in your head. You know, there's no government. It only exists in your head. There's people that work for the government. Uh, there's people that steal your money and claim that they are the government, but the government itself is just some buildings and some people. And the flag may be a symbol to some, but again, if it's a piece of cloth that you have purchased with the fruits of your labor, then it is your flag. It doesn't belong to anybody else. Symbolism can go right out the window because it's irrelevant. Now, I'm probably going to end up doing some things in this video that will upset some folks. Um, a lot of my friends and family who still think I'm a little out there, this will probably anger them too. But like I said, this is a lesson in property rights. Um, before I get to all that, I want to talk about the flag itself and why so many people hold this reverence for it. You know, there's, especially on the conservative side, the Tea Partiers, Republicans, you know, anybody who wants to associate with the right in the farcical left-right paradigm, uh, you'll see them argue a lot you know, in person or on social media, uh, talking about how they're so offended that people want to take under God out of the pledge and how wrong that is. 
Well, first of all, under God wasn't in the original pledge. Uh, and the original pledge was written by a man named Francis Bellamy, who was an admitted socialist. Not that we should hold that against him necessarily, uh, but it's always funny to see people defending these words when they're also, they'll also at the same time talk about how against socialism and communism they are. But he was a, a Christian. I've seen Baptist too, but mostly I've seen Christian. So he was a Christian socialist who work, went to work for another man whose sole purpose was to sell more flags because he sold flags. So this man's son and Francis Bellamy got together and Bellamy wrote the Pledge of Allegiance and the goal was to sell this to the schools and they wanted to get one of their flags in every school in the country at the time. So they created this pledge and marketed it and it worked. Uh, orders and orders and orders of these flags were, were made for ev or just about every school in the country. And shortly thereafter, the children in these schools were required to say this pledge at the beginning of their day while standing facing the flag. And you can search the internet and you'll find plenty of pictures um, before World War II where their hands weren't over their hearts. They were saluting it in the Nazi style. Well, what became the Nazi style. Um, that's how they saluted the flag. And this, of course, was finally wiped out after World War II because, well, we couldn't have the masses knowing that uh, this really was a fascistic, communist, socialist state in the making. Um, so we couldn't have any ties to that. So we had to get rid of that. And then the, then the notion, then the, the action became the hand over the heart instead. Um, but in either case, the entire purpose of the pledge originally was to literally sell more flags. But, like I said, it was put into all the schools, this became uh, commonplace. Uh, you know, I know myself when I was in school, way back when, uh, we were required to say the pledge at the beginning of the day. Um, and when you break it down, it's, it's very disturbing. Because you have children as young as, you know, kindergartners, first graders. I, I think first grade was the first time I did it. I was only six years old at the time. So you have kids as young as six years old reciting this pledge where you are pledging loyalty to a piece of fabric and the imagined country that it supposedly represents children of that age have no idea what they're saying even if they know some of the words it's almost impossible to imagine any of them knowing what it is they were pledging allegiance to so that is one of the biggest parts of the statist indoctrination that happens in the government indoctrination centers you know you teach kids to respect this flag and 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 you're pledging allegiance to it and and and, you know, if, if anybody who refuses to do so, uh, they're open to ridicule and, and question and, and they must be anti-American. When you beat this type of rhetoric into a young child's mind, it can cause almost irreversible harm. Um, and that can be seen at the older and older generations of Americans that are still hardcore statists because that indoctrination never left them. You know, the other funny thing, well, not really funny, but uh, if I don't laugh about it, I may cry, um, is that any discussion of damaging a flag or, or, or treating a flag with anything other than reverence is, uh, is an atrocity and uh, should be punished by law. And up until I think it was eight, uh, 1989 or 1990, it actually was the federal code for the flag on the books was any desecration of a flag was punishable um, 
by by you know certain measures by the federal government. Um, and a lot of people still point to that and say, "Oh, you're desecrating the flag! How dare you!" Um, even though you know the benevolent rulers in the uh, SCOTUS actually struck down uh, that back in I think it was 1990, um, saying that you know people cannot be punished for burning flags or treating flags. Um, they didn't really come out and say it as effectively as it should have been, but they, in essence, were protecting property rights one of the few times they actually get something right. But these days, you know, 25 years later, people still still mimic that and, and, and repeat that rhetoric of you're desecrating the flag, all without a bit of irony, because on the same token, when you tell people like that, that you believe statism itself is a religion and they say that's horrible that that's ridiculous how could it possibly be well look at the word desecrate what does desecrate mean according to webster's uh one of still one of the most popular dictionaries in the world to desecrate something is to harm or destroy a holy object holy Yes, holy. So the flag was considered a holy object. You don't get more religious than that. So people are extremely confused about property rights, about what it is they're worshiping, what it is they were taught to worship. Well, what, are they, what it was they were indoctrinated to worship and uh, what all this means and they all will get their panties in a wad if you do anything to disrespect their flag now i'm going to now show some of my property that was purchased from me combining the my time intellect and labor to acquire money for services rendered and then I, I went ahead and purchased these items while I was still a minarchist and still believed in this whole silly notion of government. So these are my property. I purchased them. Um, so I'm going to show these to you now. And here we have one of them. Here we have another. This is as I was getting closer to anarchism which to me is even funnier because this is one of those three percenter flags where most of the three percenters out there um, claim to hate the government now but still want to get back to a point of constitutionality um, and they still respect the laws. They may not agree with all the laws but the, the ideas of laws in general they respect. Um, but that's funny to me because part of desecrating the flag um, is changing it in this manner. Uh, just like wearing it is also used to at least used to be against the code, um, which is funny because you'll often see conservative types uh, wearing flag shirts, flag bandanas, flag bathing suits. I've even seen flag underwear. Um, but that goes completely over their head uh, when they berate you for daring to step on a flag, but they have no problem wearing flag boxer shorts that is literally wiping their ass with the flag all day long. And somehow that just goes right past them. Um, and uh, here we go. Here's, here's my third... Um, artifact from days gone by so I have these three flags again purchased with my money um, kept in my house um, and they are mine they are not your flag um, whatever it symbolizes to you is irrelevant because it's still my property now as you will notice they are all spread out on the ground which, uh, again, for most flag worshippers, this is a big no-no. Never want to do that. But again, my property. So, now, what I'm going to do next, 
again, is most likely going to infuriate some people, but that is not my purpose. Because I could just easily stomp all over these flags and burn them and uh, even wipe my rear end with them just to get a point across. But that's not what I'm trying, that's not exactly what I'm trying to do. I am trying to drive home a point, but a lot of these flag worshippers who I interact with, you know, on a regular basis and, and these discussions come up, uh, a lot of them will say that burning a flag or stepping on a flag or in any way desecrating flag, what do you think you're doing? Do you really think that's making a point? Do you really think the government's going to listen? Do you really think that has any impact on the government? No, but that's not why I do it. I'm not doing it to draw the government's attention and, and say how upset I am with them. Uh, I'm not even doing it so much to make, a po to make a point that I can do this to the flag worshipers out there. This is not to make a point to you that I can do this and ha ha ha. No, this is really about property rights. And I really wish more people would understand this concept because if they did, we would have a lot less problems in this world. We would also have a lot less of the state if people actually understood property rights. Because so many people believe that the state is necessary to protect property rights. But that is a contradiction. Because in order for the state to allegedly protect property rights, it must also infringe on everyone's property rights. Through taxation, or as it's better known, extortion. Uh, that is a violation of one's property rights because your the fruits of your labor, which is your property, is being taken from you against your will. And whether you say you pay them happily or you don't, coercion does not equal consent. So the whole notion that the state is there to protect property rights is just more political rhetoric. It's, it's bullshit. So that is what I want to get across to people. So again, this will probably get a rise out of some people, but that is not really my point. My point is to show what you should and can do with your own property. And people's feelings on the matter should always be irrelevant because feels do not trump natural rights. And property to me is a natural right because it stems from self-ownership. I own myself. Therefore, the fruits of my labor are also mine. And anything I purchase with the fruits of my labor legitimately in a voluntary interaction with someone else or some company now becomes my rightful property. So, here we go. This is the first one. And again, this is going to annoy some people. But this is not just for the shock and awe. This is all about property rights. These are my property, and I am doing with them as I see fit. I am not doing it to prove a point to the government. I am not doing it in defiance of the law, past or present. I am doing this to show people that your property is your business at all times, up until the point that you doing what you choose with your property actually aggresses against another. So here I am with my property on more of my property, doing with it as I see fit, and I am not aggressing against a single other person. I'm probably hurting a lot of feels out there, but that's not aggression. So, I have now treated my property the way I feel it should be treated and I'm going to treat it a little bit more. So here we now have uh, my property being disposed of as I see fit. And again, this will probably bother some people, but it really shouldn't. It's not your property. It never was. Um, it's belonged to me since I spent my own money, uh, looking back on it now foolishly, but you know, we live and learn. 
Um, I spent my money to purchase these items and uh, now I am getting rid of them because I no longer have a need for them. Now, like I said, some people are going to be really, really hurt. Um, and, you know, that's unfortunate, but uh, I'm hoping to teach some people a lesson here. It's not about what you think should be done with other people's property. It's what they think should be done. And uh, the whole notion of, uh, you know, this being a symbol to you and how dare I do this, it's not very logical because the flag, whatever it means to you personally, the flag of the United Socialist States of America is forever intertwined with the government. A lot of people want to say, no, it's, it's not, it's about, it's the, what it's about it symbolizes. Yeah, it may symbolize some things to you, but this flag, or these flags, or at least what used to be flags, um, are tied forever to the government. Just like the notion of saying, I hate my government, but I love my country, in modern par, in common parlance, is ridiculous, because... In the modern language, a country is synonymous with a nation-state. So you cannot have a country in those terms without a government. So to say you hate your government but you love your country is a terribly confused statement. They will forever be intertwined because without that government, or as I like to refer to them, violent protection racket, Without that racket enforcing arbitrary edicts and imaginary lines on a map, the country ceases to exist. And then what do we have? If we're lucky, freedom. So, for those of you out there that may watch this, and uh, based on past uh, experiences, uh, I have a feeling once this is... Uh, once this gets out in the ether and uh, some conservative or Tea Party group gets a hold of this, if somebody happens to see it, I'm sure this will be plastered everywhere. Um, death threats will come my way. Uh, I've seen it happen before. Um, you know, people saying that I'm a coward because I won't do this in public. Um, well, first of all, I'm not just going to go burn a flag in the middle of the street because the wind could pick up and I could set somebody else's house on fire. And that would be destruction of property and that would be an aggressive act. Since I believe in the, in the non-aggression principle, not for me. Uh, also, uh, I don't necessarily fear the idiots out there that want to make threats, um, but you should really check yourself because, uh, again, I didn't do anything to you I didn't do anything to any of your property. This was all mine. This was my doing to my own property. And to threaten somebody with physical violence because your feelings got hurt is just ridiculous. Yet it happens all the time. You know, I, I saw a story a couple of weeks ago where some kid uh, stood in his driveway and, and made a, you know, had something negative to say about the flag and sure enough, flooded with death threats, you know, a lot of them former or active duty military because of the symbolism, they take it as a personal affront to them. But if you want to come find me and kick my ass because I destroyed my own property, you are a very sad individual. I encourage you to seek help. Um, but I also encourage you, if you really find it necessary, to come on and try me. Because I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that are bigger and better than me, but uh, I come prepared. Uh, and I take attacks on my property, which includes me, because I own myself, very seriously. Um, if I had come to your house and burned your flag that you purchased with your money, then absolutely. You could have whooped my ass and I wouldn't have much to say about it. 
that would just be stupid on my part. Um, but for all of you out there that may see this and get visibly disturbed when you see somebody taking actions such as this, get a clue. Seriously. It wasn't yours. It never belonged to you. Symbols are symbols, but property trumps that. So, again, I wish I had actually been able to get this put together on Flag Day, but a couple days late is better than nothing. Um, and I really hope that some people who may catch wind of this and, and may get angry at first, stop and think about the concept of property rights first before they start screaming about their symbols and how I desecrated their flag because you're only proving how effective your government indoctrination was so that's all i got for today thanks everybody for watching this has been jeremy from the seeds of liberty podcast with another installment of abolitionist abstractions peace